What's going on everyone? DSP here and welcome to another edition of the Hateful Truth video game review series where you can get maximum truth and minimum bullshit. And today we're going to be talking about another... Oof, oh my god, oof, excuse me. Today we're going to be talking about another PS Vita title. Um, and this is probably the one game that everyone is kind of interested in, if it's good or not. Um, it's the one game that if you buy a PS Vita, you probably picked it up along with it. Uh, and, of course, we're talking about Uncharted Golden Abyss, you know, a flagship series for Sony, and pretty much the one killer app that everyone who bought the PS Vita said, I need to get this game and take it home. Because, let's face it, a lot of the launch titles for the PS Vita were re-releases of already existing games, ports of already existing games, and at least here you had Uncharted, it was a new title, it was something original, it wasn't just a rehash of something else. Before we even get started, it's important to note, Although this is an official Uncharted title, and although it does have all the, the, you know, the characters and everything from the Uncharted universe, it actually was not made by Naughty Dog Studios. This game was made by Bend Studios. So basically the characters in the line were licensed out for this title to come out on the PS Vita. And it shows because unlike a lot of the other Uncharted games, it does have some interesting differences between the mainstream PlayStation 3 games and this PS Vita title, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but at its core, Uncharted Golden Abyss, what it tries to do is capture, you know, the heart and the style of the existing Uncharted series, and it throws us into a story where it's supposed to be a prequel to the actual Uncharted games, and so you, you join Nathan Drake in the midst of this expedition before he had ever met anyone like, uh, you know, Elena from the first Uncharted or anything like that. It's supposed to be when he was his old treasure hunting days before that whole series had started. And similarly to a lot of other Uncharted games, you're going to have the same kind of a deal. He gets caught up in some kind of a, a dangerous situation where he thought he was just on a, a simple treasure hunting mission, ends up going into uh, all kinds of guerrilla warfare with these one revolutionary general who wants, you know, certain... Uh, artifacts and things from his, this region that he's taking over. Drake gets involved, you know, a couple of twists and turns. You meet a, a female lead character, of course, who ends up being the love interest of the story. And, you know, Drake gets double-crossed a couple times, goes back and forth. Eventually, at one point, Drake actually needs help and goes and gets Sully. So, yes, Sully is actually in this game as well. And uh, it's pretty much typically what you would expect from an Uncharted title up to now. Um, it does actually have Nolan North as the voice of Nathan Drake and also the actual original voice actor of Sully from the Uncharted series as well. So there is a direct connection to that series and you do feel like this may be, you know, part of the canon storyline of the Uncharted series. Now, the thing about Uncharted Golden Abyss is that they knew it was going to be a portable title and they knew that this wasn't going to be a game where, unlike a regular Uncharted, when you probably, probably sit down to play that game, you sit down for a couple hours at a time. You know what I mean? And so... The original uh, three Uncharted games, they range in the amount of chapters that were in there. Usually they had at least 20 chapters, maybe they had a little bit more than that. And each chapter usually was a pretty decent in length. You know, you're talking 20, 30 minutes in length. Some of them, you know, if you were in some of the final chapters, were even longer than that. Well, Uncharted Golden Abyss does something a little bit differently. They realize that probably when you go to play your PS Vita, you're not going to have that much time to play it. Maybe you're sitting down for 5-10 minutes at a time to play it. That's what you do with a portable system a lot of the time. And so, Uncharted Golden Abyss has the most amount of chapters of any Uncharted game up to now. Over 30 chapters in the game, but that doesn't mean that the game is overly long. It just means that what they did is they tried to divide the game up into a lot of chapters so that you could pick it up, play one chapter, oh, it's done, okay, that's, i got to get back to what I was doing anyway, and put it back down. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's a little bit weird at first because you don't expect that from an Uncharted game. You expect you're going to be playing and this is going to keep going and going and going. And then all of a sudden, you know, oh, you're in another chapter already. You're like, already? Really? That's kind of weird. But you get used to it over time. Okay, so let's really talk about the gameplay of Uncharted Golden Abyss because that's really where the primary differences are between the original Uncharted series on PS3 and the one on PS Vita, okay? There is the ability to play this game with standard controls, meaning it will play similar to a regular Uncharted game, but by default, the game sets you up to use all of the features, so I guess I should 
actually unplug my PS Vita here and, and show you some of the things as we talk about it, to use all of the features of the PS Vita, okay? Now keep in mind the PS Vita, I have a grip on this, this thing isn't part of the actual system. But, ideally, you know, you want to play in what, what the game makers intend you to play as, so by default you want to play with the motion controls or whatever, the touch screen controls, because that's really what the makers intended you to do. You know what I mean? Why nerf the game and go back to a standard control scheme if they felt that this was going to add to the game? So here's some of the ways that you actually use these control schemes, okay? When you're actually aiming, rather than actually use your right thumbstick to try to adjust your aim, you can actually move your Vita around like this in front of you, and it'll actually help you have precision aim on enemies, okay? Really wonky. And I tried, I really tried doing this, and eventually I said, man, this is frustrating. Like, it was really hard to maintain your aim on certain enemies. It always felt like you were just about to get it and the right shot, and then the enemy would shoot you and you lose your shot. And you're like, fuck, you know? Um, then I said, okay, I'm going to set this to, all right, just use the thumbsticks. So then I was trying to shoot just using the thumbsticks. Forget about the motion aspect. Even then it was kind of wonky. It was like you couldn't get it to move fast enough. It was hard to always beat in on a shot on a guy that maybe wasn't standing right in front of you. Eventually what I ended up doing, and I, I actually highly recommend that anyone who played this game do the same, put it on aim assist mode. What happens then is if there are enemies in front of you, when you pull, go down the sights, Date will, will actually aim for the guy. And it's not always the best shot. Sometimes it's, you know you want to shoot him in the head because his head's peeking around the corner and it aims for like a shoulder, or sometimes it just completely misses. But at least it puts you in the general area of the guy, so now you can fine-tune your shot and kill him. It was just so frustrating. The first hour or two of gameplay, not using aim assist with this thing, it just isn't as precise as this. It just really wasn't. And I don't know if it's just the sensitivity of the thumbsticks. I don't know what it was. It just doesn't feel as good as playing a real Uncharted game on PS3. And that could be because it was made by a different studio. Okay? So I do highly recommend use aim assist during the combat of the game. Um, some things of this game that utilize the controls of the Vita that are completely different from the, the regular Uncharted games. There are hidden areas, okay? The, 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 you're going to find in this game there are way more artifacts, way more hidden items than in any Uncharted game before. And they did it on purpose because they wanted it to be a combination of you not only doing combat and doing some platforming and such, but also ex exploring a lot and trying to find all these hidden items. I think really that's where some of the shorter chapters shine. Some of the chapters have no combat at all, but you can go off on tangents exploring your area and find all these hidden items, okay? And so... There's several different ways that the PS Vita's control scheme utilizes this exploration technique. Sometimes you'll walk up to what looks like a wall of bamboo trees, and utilizing your PS Vita, what'll have you walk up and there'll be an icon that'll appear. Oh, use your your machete. Oh, okay. So you tap it, and now what'll happen is on the screen it'll say it'll show an arrow going to the left. You need to take your finger and go left. And then it'll show an arrow going maybe up diagonal. You have to use up diagonal, okay? And by doing that, he goes ha ha, and he cuts through the bamboo. And then usually you can go in there and you find a hidden item, okay? So that's one way that it utilizes it. Another way that it utilizes it is there are rubbings in the game. And what I mean by that is you will find a, um, you know, a, a, an idol, a stone idol, or on a wall there will be a wall carving, and you want to take a rubbing of it. So Nate will put a piece of paper up to it and have a piece of charcoal, and now it's your job to basically take your finger and rub it back and forth across the entire screen until you get a charcoal rubbing of that piece of artwork or whatever it is you're doing the rubbing of. Um, this is hit or miss. Let me explain why. It's, it's good because it's fun you're using the, the controls, okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it to explain why it's hit or miss. Uh, another thing that you can do, again using the, the touch screen, is you might find a dirty artifact. So, oh, I found a dirty chalice, but I need to see what's on it. So you'll have the chalice there, you'll rub the chalice, you get all the dirt off of one side. Then using the rear touchpad, you'll you have your finger and you'll like rotate it around like this, you're just moving it. And it'll rotate the chalice around doing that, and then you rub it again, and you get all the dirt off of it, and then it reveals the mystery. There are also some touch screen puzzles where maybe it's like, you know, 20 pieces of a puzzle, but they're in the wrong spot, and you have to put it together to form a map, and so on and so forth. There are puzzles and things in the game that need touchscreen controls. And I think in some cases it adds to the game, because it's like, cool, oh, I see now. It's kind of a combination of one of those old, you know, these new smartphone games that already had touchscreens for 100 years, but putting it into a hardcore-style video game. That's kind of neat. 
but the number one complaint I have about it, it makes your screen dirty, okay? And I'm sure you could say, oh, Phil, but you should have bought screen protectors in this and that. Listen, ideally, when you buy a system that has touch screen capabilities, okay, you should be able to use the system out of the box without having to buy 500 accessories and still have it be a satisfactory experience. What I found is that using the PS Vita, not with a screen protector, but just like this, and doing all the motions and things that I had to do on it with my finger, it got the screen greasy, okay? And it would be annoying because you'd be in the middle of a section, fuck, oh man, it's greasy, you have to wipe it off like that in the middle of a firefight sometimes, and it could be a really annoying experience because you keep noticing it on the screen. And I don't understand how in this day and age they don't understand that, like, why did they make the screen like this? Why is it shiny and shit? Why can't they make it a surface that doesn't smudge? They exist. I know they do because I've used touch screens that don't have giant smudges on them before. Why can't they? If this is the case, why don't they give you the fucking screen protector with the PS Vita? So that way you don't have to go out and buy one because obviously it seems mandatory that you go fucking get one. That's ridiculous. So I like that they tried to utilize the controls of the Vita, but really it doesn't add anything to the experience. It's If you use the standard control scheme, I don't think you're going to have any less of a fun playing this game. You know what I mean? In addition to all that, when you're actually doing melee combat, okay, you'll run up to a guy and you'll press the melee button and it'll prompt you to press it again, press it again. Usually to finish off the melee combat, you have to do a motion like left, right, up, or down. And it's really frustrating because sometimes it doesn't work. Even though you do it blatantly correct, it doesn't register, and now the whole melee thing starts over. Like, you have to start from the first hit again. So, I'll have to hit him three more times so I get another chance to do a touchscreen command. And this can be extremely frustrating when you're in the middle of a firefight and a guy runs up to you and you, you end up in melee combat. All right, let me knock this guy out quick so I can get behind cover and not get shot to death. Oops, you missed your motion control. Then you get shot to death and you're fucked. And you're like, this is fucking stupid. Like, it's a step backwards from the melee combat from, say, Uncharted 3, where they drastically improved the melee combat in Uncharted 3. If they've now gone backwards with this touchscreen version of the game, and I was really frustrated at that. In addition to that, at the end of the game, there are two boss fights that are completely just swipes of your finger on the screen. And they actually get increasingly more difficult where you have less and less time to see what you have to do to move your finger across the screen. I had to replay those fights several times because there were several times when I did the right input and it wouldn't register the right input. So, again, these touchscreen capabilities, they're nice that they're in there. I think it's a nice added thing that they put in there. But I don't think that they're up to par with what they're trying to do, especially in this game with those final fights. I don't know how those final fights could have happened without the touchscreen, though. Because remember I said you could put it on a default or a, a regular non-touchscreen control scheme. I'm not sure how those fights would have gone. Because what is it, just mash triangle, mash square? Like, what kind of a final boss fight would that be? Shitty. So, I think some of the touchscreen elements work well. Some are just not that good. And they hinder the game. And overall, I'm rating the game again on what the game makers intended you to do. They intended you to use all these motion controls, and I don't, or not motion controls, touch controls, and I don't think, honestly, they work out too well. I think you actually end up having to use aim assist, you end up getting a dirty screen a lot of the time, or end up having to go buy accessories to fucking come back and play the game, and the touch screen controls for the melee combat don't always work properly. Really frustrating, okay? Also, I do have to say... Even though it's just a typical Nathan Drake story, he's out for treasure, then he gets wrapped up in some kind of a fight between these guys and he wouldn't know what was going on. Of course, then there's death-defying stunts, and he has to save certain people, and he has to do everything, and of course, at the end of the game, he get, there's a treasure, and then everything explodes like usual. You know, the usual Nathan Drake stuff. Um, the story really isn't up to par with the other Uncharted. It's, it's, I think it tries a lot. I think you can tell Bend is trying to emulate Naughty Dog and what they've already done. But it's just not as good. The characters aren't as interesting. I mean, Nate and Sully obviously are really interesting, but the newer characters that are introduced, including the Revolutionary General, the new female lead, uh, Nate's treasure hunting buddy, they're not very interesting characters. And I really didn't really get into it too much. Um, in fact, because there is such a small chapter, uh, a small chapter, sometimes I would only play two or three chapters and put it down and play it the next day. And you really don't get that immersive story feel that you get of the regular Uncharted titles on PlayStation 3. Now, oh, there's one other motion thing I want to mention that has really annoyed me. 
There are entire stages of this game, I shit you not. You have to row a boat. And to row the boat, you do this. Uh, 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 uh. I'm not kidding. This is what you do. Uh, 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 uh. There's a ten minute sequence where you do this, and some guys are shooting, so you shoot them. Uh, uh. Oh, there's a guy over here. Shoot him. Uh, uh, uh. And you, after that, you're like, oh my god, why am I playing this stage? So, again, they tried to implement motion controls as, or uh, touchscreen controls as much as they could. And it's just a gimmick, and it falls flat on its face. You can tell it wasn't needed. They have entire chapters in the game just trying to use the stupid touchscreen that they didn't need in there. But now, let me tell you about the one thing that I think this game is exceptional with. The graphics. This game, of all the games I've played so far on the PS Vita, by far showcases the graphical capabilities of the system. The screen is vibrant and beautiful. The graphics are extremely detailed. In fact... It almost looks exactly like Uncharted on a HD TV, and I'm not kidding. It looks that good. Now, there are some minor gripes that I have. For example, Nathan Drake's face or facial model isn't exactly the same as it is in Uncharted. He has like a slightly bigger nose, and it makes him look a little bit on the odd side. Kind of weird that Naughty Dog licensed the character, but didn't say, oh, by the way, we'll lend you the character model, too, so he looks right. No, they didn't do that. They kind of made, I guess, Ben do their own thing, and he looks a little weird in the face. Another thing is some of the characters, when they talk, their mouths don't sync properly with what they're saying. I noticed sometimes they'd be like, like that, and it, then they'd be, it didn't seem correct. But outside of those two minor gripes, I think the graphics are, I mean, beautiful, lush jungles, amazingly large-scale uh, waterfalls, huge cavernous caves, giant explosions. I mean... Really, I, I swear to you, I felt like I was playing a regular Uncharted game until all of a sudden there'd be a motion control segment. I'd be like, fuck, I have to try to aim with this thing. I have to fucking lose my finger across the touch screen. Fuck this, man. Why is that in there? So, graphics get like an A++++. Absolutely the best graphics I've ever seen in a portable game in my entire life. So, in that case, Ben Studios did an outstanding job. If you're looking for a game that is going to be visually appealing for your PS Vita, this is going to be the one, okay? So overall, what do I think about Uncharted Golden Abyss? I think that for an Unch any Uncharted fan is going to like the game. Albeit, there are some differences. There are some things that kind of screw, screw with the control scheme. And you can put it to standard Uncharted controls if you want, even though I, I prefer, you know, feeling the game as the way that the game makers intended, which obviously was with all those controls, which is why I played it with them. But if you're a fan of Uncharted, you're going to like this game. Okay, You're going to like a little bit of backstory of Nate and Sully and getting to meet a couple of new interesting characters even though they're not as fleshed out or as interesting as the ones in the mainstream series. It's still a cool departure. It's cool to be able to play what inevitably feels like an Uncharted game on the PS Vita. It's not like one of these cheap cash-ins where they just use the license and the game is nothing like the actual series. It plays very similarly to an Uncharted game from the PS3. Lengthwise, it's Probably about as long as one of those Uncharted games, probably a little bit on the shorter side. I'd say the chapters can vary in length. So like I said, there's over 30 chapters. Some chapters were literally 10 minutes long. Some were maybe 20 minutes long. Some were longer than that. So it all depends. But inevitably it ends up being about, you know, that same length as a regular Uncharted game. So no problems there. Um, and it's pretty damn fun, I have to say. I did Overall, I enjoyed the game. I don't think it's as good as an Uncharted game on a PS3, but this is the closest so far that you, I've seen to like taking a mainstream series from a dedicated console and putting it out to a portable handhold, handhold, handheld, and being true to the series. So it's a good attempt. I think there are some things they could have definitely done better with, including the utilization of the touchscreen that really didn't work all the time, and stuff like that. I think they were too too heavily into the, oh, we have to use every control possible on the fucking PS Vita. Maybe Sony, hell, maybe Sony asked them to do so. You know what I mean? Maybe they said, really showcase the Vita. Use every control possible. And they said, okay, boss, and they just did it. I think it kind of suffers a little bit for that. But that being said, it's still an enjoyable experience. Even using auto-aim, I still had a lot of fun playing the game, and it was still challenging. I still died. Even when aim assist, I was dying. So it's still a challenging game. It's still a fun game in the spirit of the Uncharted series. I don't think Naughty Dog will be disappointed with what these guys did with the Nathan Drake and, and, and the Uncharted line. I think that they were faithful to those characters. I just think a little bit of weird things with the graphical bugs. Not really bugs, but the design that didn't look spot on. That was a little odd to me, but 
I kind of said it's really that really sums up the review for me. It's pretty good. It's close to an Uncharted game for on the PS3, but it just seems slightly off. You know, if certain things have been tweaked here and there, I think this could have been a great game. Like I would have rated it an 8 or an 8.5, but being that it's slightly off, but I still think it's the best game so far for the PS Vita. That could change shortly because lots of games are scheduled to come out by the end of the year. They're, they're now getting an, uh, release dates and such. But looks, it's still, you know, for an adventure game, it's a great game. It's going to be the, you know, the game the must-buy if you bought the Vita so far. I'm going to give Uncharted Golden Abyss a 7.5 out of 10. A solid entry, a good job by Ben Studios, even though there are some weird things going on there. Uh, I still think it was pretty fun. Uh, still stay true to the series. And definitely an, an interesting and fun game. If they make another one, I think if they just refine a few things, it could be an amazing game. So hopefully they listen to some of the criticisms that people are saying about it, and the next one's a little bit better. Okay? All right, so that's it for the Hateful Truth video game review series this time around. I hope that you found the review informative. I hope you now know whether or not you'd like to check out Uncharted Golden Abyss for the PS Vita, or if you'd rather pass. And uh, that is it. So I will see you next time in another Hateful Truth game review. Thanks.